welcome to another Paula Armstrong Ceramics. So for this video I'm going to be decorating the diamond shaped bars that I made in my previous video. For the decoration I'm going to use a combination of some texture around the centre of the bars and some slip trailing at the top and the bottom. To begin here I'm just smoothing the surface so that I've got a nice surface to add the decoration to. So for the texture that I want to add, I'm starting by just rolling out some little balls of different sizes. So I've got a large sized ball all the way down to four sizes to a smallest one. And I'm going to attach these with the largest size ball along the center at the widest part of the bars and then gradually go smaller both upwards and downwards. I'm going to attach the little balls with some slip and then I'm going to use my tool to squish for the centre balls both sides and then for each of the smaller balls downwards and upwards just the one side. And this should give me a nice kind of scaly texture um, that I'm hoping will look kind of cool. So I carry this pattern on all the way around the vase, rolling out more and more balls so that I've got enough to cover the whole of the centre of this vase shape. Having worked my way round the whole of the centre of the vase, what I did find was that what would have been a good idea to start with was to make some marks onto the surface of the clay so that I stayed pretty level with each of the rows of the little balls that I was adding for texture. Because as it happens, they really weren't very level. I don't mind it because it's a very organic kind of form um, and I work in a very organic kind of way so I'm quite happy generally with things that aren't quite perfect but if you want something that's a little bit more even then I would suggest you do do the marking ahead of time. Thank you. 
really love the way this texture has turned out around the center of the vase. It does also have the added benefit of reinforcing the center join as I wasn't able to put any kind of coil on the inside. So I've used this texture to work as the coil would on the outside edge um, to reinforce that join. But it's a lot prettier. Okay, so now it's time for the slip trailing. Now, I started this by trying to figure out the best way to position the pot while I did the slip trailing, and started with it upright, but I quickly figured out that wasn't gonna work. So I tilted the pot so that I was holding it in my hands and then did the slip trailing on the side. <laughs> but as it turns out, I'm not very good at slip trailing, it seems. So I had to scrape away what I started with and restart the design. For this one, because I am going to cover the whole thing with an opaque glaze rather than using the slip colour as a part of the decoration, it didn't matter that I had a bit of the smeary white in the background. But if you are intending to put a transparent glaze over the top of your slips, then you really do need to be careful if it goes wrong and you're clearing off something you've done before. You can scrape it away, but make sure you've scraped the whole surface clear and that you've then smoothed the surface back down again to reapply once again the slip decoration. Again with the slip decorating what I found was that I should have marked the surface of the clay so that at least I had some idea of the different sections quarters of my pattern that I wanted on the pot. Um, I had again to clear a little bit off because I had miscalculated the distance between the last section. So I did have to repeat a section again. What I did find helpful was that I could use my needle tool and a scalpel to go back and do a little bit of tidying up with the slip that I'd trailed on once it had hardened up, hardened up a little bit. So while it was still running, I used the needle tool to even it out a bit. So if I had some slightly blobby lines, I could drag the slip through to even up the thickness so it wasn't so blobby. And once it had hardened off a bit more, I could go in with a scalpel and cut off any extra to help even things up and straighten some lines if I got them slightly wrong. One of the most important things I found with the slip trailing was patience. If I tried to hurry the slip trailing and turn the pot before the slip had dried off, I ended, with, ended up with things dragging and dripping in directions that I didn't want them to go. So I had to take my time and just wait for the top area that I'd just applied the slip to to dry off a little bit. It didn't take long. We're only talking a few minutes, but it was long enough that I had to sit and just wait for a bit. Okay, and there we are. 
this is the vase all finished. I hope you like it and um, I'll be doing part three of the video showing how I glaze it coming in the next couple of weeks. I'll see you again soon. Bye. Thank you.